All right. So thanks for having me, Ron. Um, and thanks for having all these great speakers. This has been a really, really good session. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. I am Jordan Thurston. I'm a senior solutions architect here at AWS. I've been at AWS for a little over a year now, and I support enterprise customers and help them migrate and modernize their legacy applications using AWS services. Uh, prior to AWS, I've been, I spent the last seven years building and managing products on AWS and specifically leveraging serverless technologies. So I've seen the impact that can have on, on developers as well as meeting business objectives. So before we get to the, the recap of, of all the announcements in the serverless realm today, um, I do want to take some time to talk about really what serverless is and, and what impacts it can have and how AWS is helping our customers leverage serverless technologies. So I think we can all agree that today modern businesses are, are facing a lot of growing pressures. They need to innovate quickly to meet ever-changing customer needs and stand out in our competitive market. They need to ensure that they are secure, resilient, and compliant, and keeping up with changing regulations within their industries. They need to respond quickly to events and insights from their various systems. And while doing all of that, they need to keep an eye on their top line revenues and start optimizing costs. So as they look to increase the pace of innovation and build new customer experiences, they're increasingly modernizing the way that they build and operate their applications. One of the ways they're doing that is by adopting a serverless operational model. So an operational model is the people, processes, and tools across the board on how you do something. So in this specific example, we're talking about software development and how you build and run applications in the cloud. And really by having a serverless operational model that's helping to drive higher velocity and better productivity across those various workloads. So as you can see on the right here, when you're using serverless services on AWS, we can take the responsibility of managing the physical infrastructure, the compute resources, the storage and databases, and the messaging and orchestration services off of your plate. And that leaves you as the customer to manage the APIs and the business logic, which allows you to focus directly on what's going to make an impact to your customers and not have to worry about all of those undifferentiating tasks. So why do customers want to adopt a serverless model? So when you're running applications in the cloud, some teams and organizations may choose to manage the cloud infrastructure themselves. However, when they do that, that means that they have to invest resources in cloud administration to ensure that their infrastructure is provisioned, maintained, upgraded, patched, load balanced, secured, and available and scaled based on the application needs and the customer demands during the build and run phases of their, of their application. This is a lot of work. And now some businesses may need to do this because maybe the infrastructure or how their applications run truly are the differentiator in their industry, or it may be due to various regulatory or, or skill set needs. So in these cases, those operators and those platform teams co-share the service delivery responsibilities with the development teams. But for teams that are looking for faster ways to turn ideas into modern production applications and reduce ongoing infrastructure maintenance in production, these tasks are operational overhead and it slows the rate of innovation. So they, these teams want to build their applications rapidly with the ability to scale quickly, have global availability and manage large amount, amounts of data and respond in milliseconds while lowering the total cost of ownership and maintain robust security postures across the board. So this serverless operational model simplifies the management and scaling of cloud applications by shifting the management of the underlying compute resources away to the cloud provider so that development teams can focus on writing code that solves the business problems. Again, focusing on the things that really make a difference to your customer and not just operating infrastructure or, or your legacy IT. So with those things taken care of, the development teams can really accelerate their time to production and, and focus all of your human resources on innovation instead of those operational tasks. And it also allows you to drive better performance and security while significantly lowering your, your total cost of ownership. And AWS helps in both phases of building and running these serverless applications. So how do we do this? So we do this by offering the widest portfolio of serverless services for building and running modern applications. Now, 
this is just a quick sample of the wide range of serverless services that we offer all built with that model of reducing the amount of operational overhead that you need to, to maintain these applications. Now, we're constantly adding new services to this portfolio. So, so this is really just a, a quick snapshot of our kind of longer running services as well as our most popular services. And, and on the left, we've got our primitives, which is our compute and our container and our event and message buses and and then on the right we've got our peripheral so our our databases our analytical services and our our workflow orchestration services um, and at reinvent we announced a, a ton of new features and capabilities across all of these services and and sort of like how brandon hit the highlights of the gen ai capabilities i'm going to just talk about some of the the key features that were added to a lot of our core services um, but when Ron does share out this deck, uh, it is a more comprehensive list. And again, similar to Brandon's, I've got QR codes and links to the blog post and announcement themselves. So you can learn how to implement a lot of these new releases and, and really get some practical um, use case understanding of, of what it really means. So let's get into some of the announcements. So first up, we're going to touch on some announcements that we brought out at reInvent for our AWS Lambda service. And Lambda is our serverless compute. So an event-driven compute service that lets you run code in virtually any type of application or backend service without having to worry about managing or provisioning any servers themselves. So that's no physical servers or even any virtual servers. You just have to worry about the function code itself. And you only pay for what you use. So the first big announcement here is that Lambda functions can now scale up to 12 times faster. So that's each synchronously invoked Lambda function can now scale by a thousand concurrent connections every 10 seconds until you reach your account's concurrency limit. In addition, each function within that account scales independently from each other. So previously where functions were invoked within the same function definition, they would scale together, whereas now they scale independently of each other. So you can really generate and, and get the benefit of those burst scaling events. And with this, customers with highly variable traffic can reach those concurrency targets a lot faster than before. So if a news site is publishing a breaking news story or an online store is running a flash sale, that is gonna get a huge influx of, of visitors all at the same time, they can now scale 12 times faster than before. And this is all available with no additional configuration or additional cost to the customer. We also announced three new runtimes. So we've got Node.js 20, our Amazon Linux 2023, and Java, 20, Java 21. So with these three new releases, it allows your developers to take advantage of the new features and capabilities within these runtimes, again, without having to worry about managing the servers that they're running on. We've also added several new logging controls. So we now support native JSON logging, native support for more log levels. So you'll see here on the, on the left, we now have trace, debug, info, warn, error, and fatal levels of logging. And that's going to help determine how many logs you're getting throughout the, the life cycle of this, of your Lambda. Uh, and it really is configurable whether you just want to hear if, if something failed, you're going to get the, the least amount of detail, or you can set it all the way up to trace logging to get every step of your, your function. And then we also have a configurable log group per, per function setting. So this is no longer applied across all of your lambdas within the account. You can set up those log groups per function. And this just helps customers get more visibility into what's going on in their, their serverless applications so they can act on it to improve better performance. Next, we're gonna jump over to EventBridge. And EventBridge is our serverless event bus that helps you receive, filter, transform, route, and deliver events. So if you're a customer that's adopting an event-driven architecture, this is where you're gonna spend a lot of your time. One of the new features in EventBridge is read-only management events. So 
EventBridge integrates with our CloudTrail service and CloudTrail logs all of the API calls within your AWS account. And that's not only the API calls that your developers or your customers are calling directly to AWS APIs, but also the APIs that are happening under the covers within the console. Now, previously, CloudTrail would send any API call that made a change to the control plane over to EventBridge that you could then trigger events and, and act upon what was going on there. So whether it was reverting a change that violated a policy or triggering a, another change based on a security event. However, if an API call was not actually making a change to the control plane, those events were not being sent to EventBridge. Now with this new capability, they are. So one example of this read-only event, as you see here in the screenshot, is, is if an application or a user made a call to list the get secret value within Secret Manager, because that wasn't making a change itself, previously that would not be sent to EventBridge. So it would be a lot harder to trigger an action based on that event. However, now, because that is a, a get call, it will be sent to EventBridge. So you can trigger either an alert or an action to, to either shut down that parameter, for example, or alert your security team to investigate why that individual or that application is making this call. So it just gives customers a lot more ability to act on different events within their AWS accounts. We also adding several new metrics within monitoring for EventBridge. So it allows you to monitor things like the number of partner events that are ingested, the number of invocations that failed permanently, and the number of targets that are invoked by a specific rule in response to an event. And again, you're probably catching a trend here. We, we've announced a lot of new features and capabilities to give our customers more monitoring and observability so that they can really see what's going on within their serverless infrastructure. So even though they aren't managing and maintaining the servers themselves, we still want them to be able to see what is going on within those managed services. The next service I wanted to talk about is, is step functions. And, and Omar already talked a good bit about step functions, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time describing it. Uh, and he even covered a couple of the announcements I was planning to cover, but I do want to call out a few others. So again, as Omar quoted Werner, uh, everything fails. And, and another way that we've added to handle some of those failures within step functions is that you now can restart your step functions from a failed state. So Previously, if a step function workflow failed, you would have to restart the entire workflow, including the successful stages. Now you can restart that workflow directly from the failed state. So this reduces load by not having to rerun the successful states. And it also helps isolate those specific states for troubleshooting. And then one more feature I wanted to call out with step functions and following up with Brandon was perfect. Um, Step Functions now has an optimized integration with Bedrock. So everything that Brandon was talking about with all of the various Bedrock features and capabilities, you can now integrate those directly into your Step Function workflows and bring that generative AI capability to your workflow orchestration without having to write any additional code. You can link directly from Step Functions over to your, your Bedrock instances, and then bringing the results right back into, into your workflow and, and act upon them from there. And then the last service I wanted to talk about with, with respect to time is SQS. And SQS is our simple queuing service, which again, works similar to our event bridge, but in the messaging realm. So it helps queue up messaging, which helps to um, break apart various applications and decouple your, your workflows. So for SQS, again, following the trend of, of monitoring and observability, we announced several new logging events within SQS to our cloud trail service. 
So again, just giving our customers more and more visibility into what is going on within their, their serverless workloads. And now I did have a few more services that I wanted to cover, um, but I think that I'm running up on time. So as I said earlier, I will have Ron share out this deck which which covers all of our very hey Jordan Jordan yeah. we've got a couple of minutes we've got a video you're gonna you're our last live speaker so why don't we at least you know spend a couple you know spend two minutes and just yeah. highlight these other ones okay yeah sounds good yeah so some of the other ones that I wanted to cover are more broad overarching capabilities not necessarily specific feature releases so the first one is a, our new AWS integration application test kit. So this is a software library that lets you write automated tests for your cloud-based and specifically serverless applications. So the link here talks takes you through a blog post on how you can leverage that to build tests across your, your various serverless services. So all the services that we showed on that, that screen earlier, you can use our integrated application test kit to build automated testing across those various services. So just making it easier on developers to, uh, to do that testing across the, the full ecosystem within the cloud. And in a similar realm, we also announced our app Composer, which gives you a visual interface and where you can drag and drop AWS services and tie them together like you would any standard diagramming application. And then within App Composer, it then goes and generates the, the infrastructure as code, which can then go and be deployed into your AWS account. So another easy way to, to really build these serverless applications without having to go in and, and hands-on spin them up and have the ability to maintain all of that as infrastructure as code. Uh, and, I, and that was the last big one that I wanted to highlight. I, I've got a ton of slides in here, but those are really the, the big key announcements. And then I did wanna share that, that once this deck comes out, we do have a serverless compute playlist on YouTube. So you can watch all of these announcements that were announced at reInvent, rewatch the videos, and then go check out the blog posts to actually learn how to implement this in your own environment and really start leveraging the all of the benefits of serverless technology. And that is all I had. So yeah, I'm Jordan Thurston. Great. If you have any questions on, on serverless or, or anything else AWS related, feel free to reach out and either reach out to Ron and he'll, he'll pass along to me or reach out to me directly.